Hey guys, this is Kevin here with ReadyMade RC. Today I'm here to show you the ReadyMade RC Recruit. We're going to build the PNP RTF. We're going to show you how to set it up with multiple radios and we're going to fly it. Okay, now that you've unboxed your Recruit, the first thing you're going to want to find is your hardware pack. It contains these six screws here, four of which are for the winglets and the two thumb screws are for your center section. So let's get started with the winglets first. Make sure you have the correct right and left winglet. You can notice by the uh, curvature of the airfoil which one it matches. So this one is the right one, we're going to put it on the right wing. And it fits in with the groove here. If you want to, you can glue it uh, for some extra, extra support, but it's really not needed. These screws are more than enough to hold them. Especially if you want to travel, you're going to want to leave it unglued. And keep going until the screw bottoms out and you've attached one winglet. And do the same for the other side. Okay, now that we've installed the winglets, let's install the center spar. Slide it through the center section like so, until it reaches the other side, about halfway. Next, you're gonna to wanna to slide on one of the wings. Not all the way. Leave enough space so you can push the servo wire through the hole and pull it through under the spar so you don't catch it with the canopy. Same for the opposite. Once you've done this, you can now pull, push the wings together. Just make sure you don't catch any wire slack in the seam. Pull it tight before you push it all the way through. Okay, once it's fully seated, you can insert the thumb screws. Insert it in the center hole. And tighten until it draws tight. Okay, now that the wings are attached, we're going to want to install the servo wires into the gyro. Now you'll notice each side is labeled aileron left and aileron right. That's extremely important because they're going to key into the gyro Okay, we're going to install this with the ground facing down. And the label aileron right corresponds with aileron right. Same thing with the left. Ground facing down. Okay, the throttle should have already been installed. If it wasn't, just follow the chart. It says throttle out with the ground down going through the ESC. If you've purchased the RTF version of the Recruit, the receiver is already wired up. However, you will need to use the included Velcro to seat it. Okay, now that we've secured your receiver, let's make sure the control services are going in the correct direction. First, you're gonna to wanna to find four AA batteries and install them in the back of your transmitter. Make sure your propeller is not installed because you don't want to cut up your fingers. Turn your radio on first. From the factory, it is already bound to your transmitter, so you shouldn't have to, but we'll go over that too. Turn it on. Once you've powered your receiver and transmitter, you will notice this LED here. It's either red or blue. That's very important for you to know which one this is because this is your safe mode or your expert flight mode. Of course, if you're a beginner, you're gonna to wanna to have it in safe mode starting out. So, blue means safe mode. That allows you to go in about a 45 degree angle in either direction. In case your radio was not bound from the factory or you happen to lose bind, let's go over how to rebind your transmitter to your receiver. In case you need to rebind your recruit to your transmitter, you'll notice in the transmitter box a PDF manual on the CD and also the bind plug. You will want to plug the bind plug into the BAT channel on top of the receiver. Power it on in this position. Propeller off, of course. And on the receiver, you will see the red flashing light. While it's in this mode, you will want to power on the transmitter while holding down the bind, bind button 
on the bottom left corner of your radio. Power that on. Release. Now you'll want to unpower the receiver. Turn off the transmitter. Remove the bind plug. Power on the transmitter again. You'll see a green light. Power on the receiver. And you'll notice a solid red light. That means that the bind worked. and you have control. Next, we'll want to make sure that our control surfaces are all going the correct direction. First, we'll power on the, tran the transmitter, followed by the receiver. Let the gyro calibrate and turn on. If you're turning right, you want to see this servo pop up. That will mean that it will go down and turn to the right. And for the elevator, if you pull back on the stick, you'll want to see these console, control services go up. In this case, you can see that it is the wrong direction. Now, on the stock radio, you'll see these switches across the bottom. Locate the one that says elevator, reverse it, or any other channel that needs reversed. And once you reverse the elevator, push down on the stick, and it should now be going the correct direction. In this case it is. The services are both going up as I push down. The same can be applied to the aileron if needed. Underneath both sticks on your transmitter, you'll notice this small switch. Right or left will adjust your trim on the uh, aileron or pitch. If you max out your trim in one direction or the other, you may be off a spline on your servo. To change this, you'll simply use a screwdriver, put it in at a 45 degree angle, and make it mostly flat. Unscrew it, adjust the spline, and screw it back in. You'll want to have both servo horns facing up, rather than off a degree. Keep in mind with this basic radio system that if you happen to lose signal, it will keep the last input it received. There is no real failsafe. So assuming you're going to fly line of sight for your maiden flight, we need to establish center of gravity. On the bottom side of the recruit, you'll notice two almost uh, dime size bumps that say CG. And that's your center of gravity point. You're going to want to put your fingers on this when you're ready to fly and make sure that you're balancing on this. If you are too, too nose heavy or too tail heavy, it will tend to not fly well. So this is extremely important. Since the recruit was designed to fly with an HD camera or FPV camera in the nose, you may need to add some nose weight to achieve the proper center of balance. In this case, we have simply added the, one of the HD camera uh, wood mounts as well as the nose. And with the canopy on, it does achieve center of gravity with the battery all the way in the nose. If you intend to fly your recruit FPV, uh, you will not want to rely on the stock ESC's BEC, or Battery Eliminating Circuit. Uh, it will overpower it and you may experience uh, loss of power. So we recommend using a separate back or separate battery to power your FPV system. Your recruit comes ready to accept several HD camera options. Here we have the Runcam HD3 and the Mobius Wide Angle. It can also accept uh, other cameras such as the GoPro 5, uh, the Hero Session, or a multitude of other HD cameras. First we'll install the Runcam Session 3. Locate the U-shaped wood bracket. You'll notice it has a nice rubber stop on the bottom and Velcro on the top. Slide it back, Velcro over the top, insert into the front, slide it till it stops, and use this square cutout, obviously, for the run cam. And magnets will secure it. If you wanted to use the Mobius, you'll use the same mount, you, but you will want to add some Velcro. Use the nose piece that has the center hole, affix it to them with the magnets,
and there you have it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to install a Spectrum radio into your Recruit. In this case, we're using the Spectrum DX6 along with the Lemon 6 channel receiver. Okay, for plugging in your receiver, you'll need to first look down this list to see exactly which wire corresponds with the correct channel. In this case, we have aileron on power and uh, ground. Typically, you would see this on throttle. In this, it's actually on aileron, so make sure you make note of that. Going to the list, we have, of course, ailerons, we have elevator in blue, throttle is yellow, and the mode switch is here in green. So however that corresponds with your receiver is how you want to hook it up. So after you have your receiver installed, we're going to go into the DX6 and make a new model. So we're going to hold down the button, go down to System Setup, select Yes, Model Select, Add New Model, create this, and go to Model Type, select Airplane, Reset Data, and now we're going to scroll down to Bind, and select, and we're going to leave this selector here. Now we're going to plug in the bind plug to our receiver and power it on. Notice the red flashing light signaling bind mode. And over here, we're going to select bind. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Okay. Bind complete. Okay, so now that we have a proper bind, we're going to remove the bind plug. Set it aside, and let's check servo direction. So if I want to turn right, I'm going to move this stick to the right, the roll. This should be coming up, so we'll need to reverse that channel. And if I want to pitch up, these also need to pitch up. So we need to reverse that as well. While we're here, let's just check the throttle and make sure it works. We're good there. So let's go in and reverse the channels. Go into the menu system, servo setup, highlight travel, click it, and scroll over to reverse. Now we wanted to reverse the aileron, so we'll click that, and the elevator, and we'll do the same here. So now that we've changed direction, let's make sure it's correct. If I'm rolling to the right, like so, I would want this to pop up, and it is. If I wanted to gain altitude, I would push down to bring these up, and that's correct. So now that we know that's correct, let's move on and set up the mode switch. On the DX6, the stock gear channel is on A, the A switch, which only has two positions. If we change it to the B switch, which is a three position switch, we will gain a third mode in the middle of off. Okay, go into system setup and hold the wheel, select yes. Go down to Channel Assign, skip this page, go to Next, and on Channel 5, select A, and move the switch that you want to use. In this case, it's going to be switch B. It will automatically choose the correct one for you that you moved. After that, select it again, and we have saved it. So we will back out to the main screen. And we will go to monitor, back into the menu system. All the way at the bottom, you will find monitor. Go into that. And if we move the B switch, you will see on the gear channel, channel 5, it is moving in three positions. Okay, let's plug it in again and make sure that our mode switch is changing the channels on the gyro. So now that we have let it fully initialize, our B switch in the forward or front position is blue on the LED. That means it's in the, the full launch or stabilized mode. Center switch is flashing red, which means it's off, no stabilization. And back is full red, which is the acro mode, or so you can do rolls and loops. 
So in addition to using a full-sized spectrum receiver, you can also use the satellite. Now to use this, all you have to do is plug it into the port that's on top of the gyro, just like this. And this button on the front is going to be your bind button. So when you power it on, you're going to hold that down and then turn your transmitter on in bind mode. One thing you want to be sure of though is to remove the prop so it doesn't cut your fingers. While holding the button, apply power to the receiver and you will see it go into bind mode, the, the fast red flash. So that means we're ready to go with the radio. Hold down the bind button while turning it on. For failsafe on spectrum radios, it's best to refer to your specific receiver's owner's manual to set the failsafe. So for those of you with a Tyrannus, this is how you will set it up. Let's create a new model. In here, uh, you'll be tempted to select the flying wing because this is a flying wing. However, you don't need to do any mixing with this gyro. So you go right into the airplane mode. You'll select page and we will scroll down and for the X4R which we are using we will select D16. This one is already in that position so we will leave it there and we will go to the bind mode hit enter and we are in bind mode. We can leave it on while we plug in the receiver. You'll need to hold this button down on the receiver on the X4R while powering it up. This could be a little tricky, so you might have a friend help you. Once it's flashing, it's in bind mode, and we can push enter on bind on the Tyrannus. Okay, now that it's bound, back out to the main menu. Let's check control surfaces to make sure they're going the correct direction. So I push down on the stick, it should be going up so we can gain altitude. In this case it's backwards, just like the Spectrum Radio. Let's roll to the right, this should go up. So that seems to be correct. Rolling to the right, moves this servo up. So the only thing we need to change is the direction of the elevator. To reverse the elevator channel, we need to go and hit Menu and Page until we get to 7. And there's 7. Since elevator is on channel 3, you can see by the arrow moving, we will scroll down to 3, hit enter, change this arrow for direction, hit enter, we want this to be reversed. Now we can test it. So moving the stick down makes the servo go up, just like we want. To do this, we'll go into our mixer, which is page 6 on the menu system. On this page, we'll scroll down to rudder, hit enter, hold enter, edit, and we will scroll down to where the source is, hit enter. Now we're going to use SG as our three position switch. Slide that to center and it works. So we'll hit enter to save it and on our gyro we can verify which mode we're in currently. Since I'm in the center on SG you'll see a flashing light going forward is solid red which is acro mode with stabilization and all the way back is your blue fully stabilized or launch mode. You can always change direction, of course, if you'd like to have it towards the front or back. The next thing we want to do is set the failsafe. So select Menu, go to the next page, go down until you see Failsafe. Failsafe mode. We will hit Enter, move this from hold to custom. We will set what we want the failsafe to be in case signal is lost. 
So we don't want to have any throttle. What I like to do is to have a slightly back elevator and one way or the other have a little bit of roll. The idea is that hopefully it will slowly circle in the air uh, with zero throttle until it touches down in a hopefully safe place. In order to set the fail safe for a particular channel, you'll hit enter. And since we want the elevator to go up, we're going to want to move this number in a way that makes it move up if we lost signal. I've set my roll to a value of 20. And I will set the same value for the elevator. Of course, you can go more or less, if however you feel comfortable. You'll also want to set your throttle to a full negative value. Otherwise, you'll, your throttle will turn on when it goes into failsafe. Changing your mode switch to negative 100 on this setup will make your recruit go into fully stabilized mode. So if you do run out of signal, uh, it will hopefully circle in fully stabilized mode with a throttle off. Hit enter. Now let's test it. Of course, the, the uh, propeller is off for this test. We're just going to turn off the radio and see what the ailerons do. Now that we've added a neutral switch, which effectively turns the gyro off, we need to make sure that when in neutral mode, the ailerons are, are actually neutral. So since, you, since this is actually mixed through the gyro, we can't just change a trim on your Tyrannus or Spectrum. You're going to have to do it manually. So in order to do that, we will pop off this clevis and tighten it down to bring this up. So we'll twist this down four or five turns, since it's this one, this model it was a little drastic, and see if this helps. Maybe one or two more. And right there, we're at level. OK, one thing you might need to do when you power on your receiver and get it uh, set up is calibrate the motor to the ESC. So when you power it on, go to full throttle with the propeller off. It's very important. Apply power. You'll hear it start beeping goes into programming mode, throttle down, you'll hear it initialize, and it's, it's calibrated, so you're good to go. So now that we're done installing the radio, we need to install the propeller. Now you'll notice on the blade, there's a 6x3 lettering on it. This always faces forward to the nose of the plane. If you have this on backward, you'll probably notice a loss of thrust, and it won't want to take off very well. So if you have those issues, make sure you look at the lettering, and it's facing forward. Unscrew the nut, slide on the propeller, and using your ready-made RC 8mm wrench, you'll want to tighten this down until the prop can't spin freely on the shaft. So with your Recruit RTF, you'll receive this orange RMRC 2235C pack with XT60 and balance port. And you also receive this small charger. It has a typical US plug on one side, of course, and then on the battery side, you've got a two cell and three cell port. Since it's a three cell battery, you're going to plug into the three cell side. Another cool feature about this is you have three LEDs going across that show each cell individually charging. As each one goes uh, charged, it will turn green. Okay, so now that we have your recruit all set up, assembled, and ready to fly, let's go ahead to the field and see how it does. So for your first flight, you're going to want to go to a place that's free of uh, water, buildings, trees, cars, or, or roads, unlike what we have. So avoid doing that. Uh, but another thing you're going to want to watch for is this light on here. This is your gyro light. And we're going to go from red, which is in uh, acro mode, off and fully stabilized and takeoff mode. Go to about three-quarter throttle. And just give it a nice 45 degree launch.
So when you're ready to land your recruit, you always want to land going into the wind. This makes, uh, makes it a lot easier to slow down and uh, keeps the airflow going over the wings. So right now I kind of have a crosswind. I'm going to do my best efforts to land it uh, kind of with the 45 degree angle that it had. All right, guys, that does it for the ReadyMed RC recruit. I hope this video has helped you with your build, helped you get in the air, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you tag us in all of your videos and keep on flying. Thanks.